Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Carla if you're new here and I make videos about how I show for myself in hopes of inspiring you to do the same. And by showing up for myself I transformed my whole life. I lost half my body weight hence the name half of Carla. I overhauled my mental health and solved and worked on and continue to work on lifelong mental illnesses. If you guys are checking with me today, you're probably very interested in that weight loss element, but also on my channel, I talk about mental health, I talk about ADHD, showing up for yourself, fashion and beauty and all things in between. So if that's something that you're interested in, please, please hit that subscribe button. We're nearly at 100k guys. That's crazy. I'll get like my first plaque or award or anything since I've been doing this job for the last four years. So. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notifications so you never miss a video from me. And let's get into it. I'm going to leave part one up here, which is the first five uncomfortable truths about losing over half your body weight. And there was such a wonderful response to that video. So thank you all so much for watching that and engaging with it. Let's hop straight into it, will we? Three minutes into the recording. The first uncomfortable truth is literally uncomfortable. <laughs> it's literally uncomfortable. And that is that when you lose weight, you will experience issues with bones and that your bones will start to protrude or stick out or hit off each other when you're walking. Now, this might not sound like the worst thing in all the things that we've talked about in the Uncomfortable Truths. It's not. It's just kind of something that you have to deal with. One of the things that you think is going to happen when you are overweight is that all of a sudden, you're going to lose weight and everything's going to be okay and unfortunately that's not the reality the reality is that we have to change so many other things about us in order to lose weight being skinny or thinner is not the be all and end all of everything that we've ever done, not needed done in our lives and so sometimes there are uncomfortable things and one of those uncomfortable things is that your bones stick together i experience this the most when i'm lying on my side when my knees like push together when I'm in bed. I now have to sleep with a very thin pillow, to sleep with a really thin pillow. That one there. Between my knees so that they are not pushing off each other. I've also noticed that I have injured myself a little bit more in certain situations. Something into things I, if my hip used to hit off a door frame or a door handle, it wouldn't be that big a deal. Now if it does, it hurts the bone and that hurts a lot. And similarly then in the same vein or similar vein to point one, the second uncomfortable truth about weight loss is that your body won't be automatically perfect. I'm asked constantly about the impact loose skin has had on me and that people use loose skin as a reason to not lose weight, but I do believe a lot of the time it's actually an excuse not to lose weight. I can tell you first of all, that the life that I live now at my goal weight in comparison to the life that I lived prior at 323 pounds, a completely different life. It is so full, it's so wonderful. And while I am dressed, I look like your average normal standard sized woman. The majority of people that I meet now have no idea that I ever used to be morbidly obese, which I find really interesting. I sometimes feel like I have to tell them, which is another thing that's a psychological thing that I have to get over. But the majority of people have no idea. They would never have guessed. And I don't introduce myself to people as, hi, I'm Carla, I've lost half my body weight. I'm just Carla. And I remember when, when people find your profile for the first time, or when people learn that, you know, maybe for you, it was that they saw a photograph of you from before. It can be quite jarring to see, but the point is that most people wouldn't have had a clue that I had been overweight. And that's because I dress really well. And yes, I have loose skin, but most people don't even think about it or give two hoots about it. And that's why I say that please don't allow loose skin to be a barrier between you and living your best and healthiest life. Now, in saying that, I do have to deal with the fact that my body looks like it did when I was 23 stone, just a smaller version. I do have so much loose skin and sometimes, especially from my waist to my knees, for me when I look at that 
part of my body when I'm naked, I have to be very careful and cautious with myself because in my mind I can slip back to believing that that is the same body as before. It is a much smaller body. Not that it's any value is different, but it looks very similar in a way that it has lumps and bumps uh, that it used to have. Those lumps and bumps are just smaller. And that's because of the excess weight that I had. And because of that excess weight, it created kind of, I don't want to say strange, but it created different looks in my body. And most people, when going from being morbidly obese to a regular size, to a standard size, will find that their body will not look like they hoped it would look. I never expected my body to look like my friends who have never been overweight. I have many friends who are exactly the same weight as I am now, who have never been overweight. They might have, you know, put on a couple of pounds here and there and lost it, but they've never been overweight. I would never expect my body to look like their body. And I did not expect that when I was losing weight. I knew that I would have loose skin. I knew that I would have some lumps and bumps. I knew that I would have some areas and pockets of fat that don't go. And that's just the uncomfortable truth about it is that they're still there and there are still reminders of me in my body. And eventually I will be having skin removal surgery. It's extremely costly and it's not something I can afford to do right now. But it is something I will be doing because for me it will be the final not hurdle, it'll be the final treatment for my new body. It'll be the final thing to go, okay, that's that's it done now. That will be the final leg of that journey. The life that we are living is so much more full than the life that we lived before. It's so much easier. It's so much better for our health. It's so it's so much fuller and freer than ever before. So please don't let like loose skin like oh, show me some of my loose skin. Everybody's very fascinated about loose skin. It's really interesting. It's like, like this. I ain't going anywhere. There we go. There is some loose skin. So like and I have all of this here. This is like the secrets of YouTube. I'm wearing double leopard print because I got cold and I still wanted the leopard print thing. So I put this on. <coughs> So like, she got loose skin and I knew that that was going to be the reality when I lost weight. But please don't let that put you off. The next uncomfortable truth is that if you have white knuckled it to get to your goal weight, most likely you're going to regain. And that is a sad, I'm sorry, and very uncomfortable truth. If we do not address the head part that led us to being overweight, to deal with the habits and actions that got us there and change those and manipulate them so that they are working in our favor. That we are doing things that are going to help us get to our goal and help us to live our lives in maintenance. If we don't address them while we're losing weight and maybe continuing after we've lost weight, then most likely those habits are going to sneak back in again and we're going to continue to pull back on weight. And we're going to possibly blame other people or say programs didn't work. It is not about what we're putting into our mouth. It's about why we can't stop putting something into our mouth. So if you're an emotional based eater, you need to find a way that is helping you to cope with that emotion and feeling that emotion and living that emotion as opposed to escaping it through food or a different coping mechanism that's going to help you to live through those emotions. Maybe it's therapy, maybe it's dancing, maybe it's walking, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's journaling, maybe it's with a therapist that's going to help you to do that. Maybe it's that somebody said, what if you eat out of self-sabotage and self-hatred? Well, what happens when you get to your goal weight and those hateful thoughts come back in? Are you going to reach for food again then to continue to self-flagellate? We have to address the issues and the behavior and the habits and the actions that got us to there. That's why programs like Body Slims are so important. And this isn't an ad for Body Slims. It's that this is, I believe, the reason why the odds are stacked against us for weight maintenance. It's because when we're talking about weight maintenance, 
it's for people who have white knuckled it or had bariatric surgery or zempicked their way to weight loss without addressing the issues, the root causes and the behaviours. Those of us who've done programmes, those of us who have had weight loss surgery and those of us who have ozempicked and in conjunction with that worked on those behaviours, those habits and the actions together will not regain. They might, but the percentage I would fathom hypothesize is a lot lower and that is a really uncomfortable truth that people do not want to do. The next uncomfortable truth is that people will probably observe what you do and don't eat and this can be triggering for those of us who have ever been monitored before in our food intake and that have caused secret eating and that's something that did happen for me is that I was monitored when I was younger on my food intake and then when I lost weight, if somebody commented or observed what I was eating, I had to not resort to food as a coping mechanism. And I had to remind myself that no matter what somebody says, the only thing that matters is how I feel about myself and what I'm doing for myself. When you lose weight, you're most likely going to become the topic of conversation. People like to gossip. People also like to just talk about themselves, but people like to gossip. I am obviously a semi-public figure. I am not a celebrity by any means, but there are people who will know me. Some people will know me. Not everybody, but some people will know me. I really like meeting guys in person. And there are people that I meet in person or that I don't meet or I see who give me that kind of knowing look. But there are also people who don't want the best for you or who are kind of gossipy. Now this is an extreme example. But there was one day that I was at a, an event, it was an ex exhibition, and I was really hungry. And I ordered a cookie and I was eating the cookie. I'm enjoying the cookie because I can eat a cookie, as we all can eat a cookie. And somebody took photographs of me eating that cookie. Now I couldn't prove it, I couldn't, didn't want to go over and make a scene or anything like that, but there is that observation of, now I built this narrative in my head, so maybe this is completely nothing to do with me, but I knew, you know when you know, and I imagined that narrative was like, oh look, here she is eating the cookie now, you know, or I'd be out and I'd be eating something, I've had gone for dinner sometimes, and somebody would come up and say, don't worry, I won't tell Jer, as in the coach of body slims. And I was like, well, first of all, the only person I'm accountable to is myself and Jer wouldn't give two hoots what I eat. And also, what difference does it make? Why would you tell somebody? It's, there is that observation. And I know that these are extreme cases because of my presence and online and people feel that they know me. But it is true for other people. I know that family gatherings can be very triggering for people when we go to a family gathering and somebody starts to say, oh yeah, okay, well you won't want to be eating that now, would you? Because you'll put it on and, or you might regain or, oh, I see you're having butter. Oh, you know, I assume there'd be no dessert for you, Carla. No, I want dessert. I'm, I'm done in the diet phase. I'm in the maintenance phase. I'll have the dessert, thank you very much. And there is this idea that you can't eat dessert, cookies, cake, whatever it is with, you know, when you get into maintenance. You can't eat them every day, but you can eat them and enjoy them. And I do. I love them. But it's not the be all and end all of everything. So please just be aware that that is something that will happen most likely. But remember, so long as you're steadfast in your resolve, you don't need to fight with people about these things. You don't need to be confrontational. Think about if you're going to put energy into somebody else. I think about it this way. When we decided to lose weight and we found the way to lose weight, whatever way that may be, and then, but previously people had tried to tell us something, you know, we weren't ready to hear it. And people might be commenting, thinking, well, there's no way you can eat a cookie when you're in weight maintenance. It's not your job to educate somebody else or to try to change their mind or convince them. You don't need to convince them. There's no need to do that. Just let it go. 
just let it go it's not worth your energy and then guys my final uncomfortable truth which is honestly probably the hardest no not the hardest but one of the hardest of the last 10 that i shared with you and that is that friendships will change and this is painful and it is telling there is a grieving process and that's okay i have had friends who i've lost since i was lost weight and there could be many reasons for this nobody has directly come out and said obviously now that you're thinner i don't want to be your friend it's not how the world works unfortunately when we step outside the preconceived box that somebody created for us the box that we fit into and that they were familiar with, the box that they were comfortable with, where we knew our hierarchy in the world, where we shrunk ourselves or we were the fat funny one or we were the whatever it is. When we change that and we change and step outside whatever their preconceived idea of us is, it can cause somebody to look at themselves and it can make them feel uncomfortable or it can just make them feel uncomfortable and we can lose friendships because of it. It's like what I said, when my sister started to lose weight, I got very angry about the fact that she lost weight. Now, because she was my sister, it wasn't as easy to just, you know, scoot on down the road. But there was a possibility that she had been a friend and I had seen her do that. I would have felt bad about myself and I did feel bad about myself because it, it shone a light, a mirror that I had to look at my behaviour. And there is also an element, I believe, of jealousy and that not everybody wants the best for you. It's a hard lesson to learn, it's an uncomfortable truth that not everybody wants the best for you. And probably we don't want the best for every single person. I'd like to think that I do, but probably I don't. And so it's important that we grieve that and move on with our lives. I remember when I quit drinking, I lost a lot of friends as well. And looking back on it now, that's okay. It's okay that I lost those friends because I changed, that I changed my behavior. And that might be the same for you. I had friends previously that I used to go to the cinema with. And we used to get tons and tons and tons of food. And if one of them had stopped wanting to do that, it would have made me feel very uncomfortable. And so my request to you or my encouragement to you is to be compassionate to those people, but don't shrink to allow somebody else to shine. This is your time to shine. This is your time to continue. And there is enough light to go around all of us so that we can all shine together and make each other brighter. And if somebody's not willing to do that for you, that's okay. Wish them well, wish them the best, wish the best for you and continue on. And it's okay to grieve those times, it's okay. But as we change and we evolve through our lives, sometimes people won't evolve with us. And sometimes people will evolve and leave us behind. These are just facts of life, but they're uncomfortable truths and they're things that we're going to have to deal with, especially in a weight loss journey. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this part two. If you have made it to the end, please leave me some hearts for our compassion, the colour of your choosing or X's if you are on a thing where you can't leave comments or don't know where your emojis are. Let me know any uncomfortable truths that you guys have encountered from losing weight and let me know what you think of these. Is there anything that I've missed or anything that you would like me to cover? And yeah, I just want to thank you again for always tuning in, always watching and being a part of this channel. I hope that I will see you very soon. Please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and maybe share it with somebody else that you think it might be of value to. I will love you and leave you and see you very soon. And please do not forget to show up for yourselves.